morning. Today I'm on a place called Walney Island. It's a very small little island in a place called Barrow and Furness, just south of the Lake District. And it's coming up to sunrise. I'm heading up to this nature reserve on the northern end of the island. And the island is tiny, it's only a mile wide but I think it's about 10, maybe 11 miles so north to south. So it's quite an interesting little place. And there's a little airfield right here, so there'll be no, no drone footage B-roll today. Probably get arrested if I try something like that. What I'm here for is mainly birds, only small birds. And there's loads of little, well there's some small reed beds here. There's also loads of a brush like a gorse and these kind of small trees and things like that so uh, I have an idea for today for what uh, kind of what I wanted to do so we'll get into that once we hit the reserve right up here photographing these small songbirds that are around the reserve. I wanted to talk a bit about actually consciously kind of making the image when you're taking photos of birds. It's so actually thinking about what kind of environment, what other elements you want in the frame. And as I've been walking around this reserve, I've noticed three different places that look quite good. Because it's quite easy when you come to a place like this to just kind of walk around and try and chase every bird you see and just get a picture, get a picture, get a picture, next one, next one. Um, but instead of that, trying to find areas or habitats or other like branches and things like that, that they sit on that's going to look good in the frame, that's going to look good in an image, that's going to you know make a nice composition. And I've identified three. I mean, there's probably loads more, but I've seen three that I really like right here. Uh, first one was the yellow gorse, the, the yellow flowers and the gorse as I first walked in here. Very colorful and you often get birds sitting on top of those, um, those gorse bushes. So that makes for a nice kind of element, like you got that yellow color, you can play around with it, a bit of out of focus, and you use that in your composition. Now the next one, was these, I think it's willow, I'm not sure, but it's these catkins that are here that are coming out. Hey, see, there are all these kind of yellow little seeds on them. They also make for a really nice composition, and those are probably actually my favorite. And I'm looking for areas that has a lot of them and they get some birds. You can't make a bird land exactly where you want, but you can spend time in the areas that look better for photos. Um, spend more time in those areas and try and just wait there until you get birds. Maybe try and find an area that you hear a lot of bird activity first, that has these sort of, like, other catkins or gorse, um, and, and, and spend more time there and trying to get photos that will actually look really good as, as opposed to just walking around and taking an image whenever you see a bird. This third habitat I found here are these reeds around uh, this little water here and they also make for a really nice composition. You know you can get birds walking up those um, reeds and it becomes quite a minimalistic image because all the reeds are all the same and you just get that one bird in between. So those are the three areas that I found in this reserve that I want to focus on. I'm gonna walk around a little bit more, see if I can find areas that has these, these elements and that has birds in them, and then spend some time there and trying to come up with some good images. I'm 
actually stumble onto a fourth little micro habitat that I really like. So it's there's all these little bushes that are growing here in the water and up the trunk of them they have this amazing lichen on the trees that creates this like really cool atmosphere. I'd love to get some birds on or next to this lichen. I think it created for a really cool shot. I'll spend a little bit of time just to see if anything's going to come near here and hopefully come down on these lower branches. I'll just sit behind here, this little ridge, have a bit of coffee, take, just wait for a bit to see if anything's going to come here. So hard to see. From the moment we arrive Cornelia You are one who will survive When time's been bad You put smiles on it So I've been here for about maybe 20 minutes, half an hour And I still don't have a single photo to show for it but I have flocks of goldfinch coming through, but they've been a little bit high up, not where I want them. I don't want to be pointing the camera up like that. It's not going to create a very nice image. And they haven't been around the, this lichen here that I really like so much. So not had an opportunity to take a nice image yet. There's also a chiff chaff, first of the year actually, that's flying about here. I can, I can hear it just behind me. So. That's also a possibility that I might come back here. I can hear skylarks above. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but they're unlikely to, to land in here. They're hardly ever gonna, I don't think they ever would land in anything like this. They're more a bird out in the open habitat and land uh, down in the grass. So um, it's not really a bird I can count on to come here. I think this is just going to create for such a cool image that I will spend some more time here even if it means sitting around waiting a lot. Alright, no photo. I've probably been here for maybe an hour now and birds keep coming back but people keep walking by, flush them away and they don't land exactly where I want them to land. So I'm going to take a little bit of walk around the reserve try and find more places where Goldcrest, I find it a very tricky bird to photograph. It is tiny, it might be the smallest bird in the UK. Um, and it just, it jumps about so much. And it's just very tricky to even get a picture of or see. We came in here with uh, all the moss and the, the feeling I am still in there. I'll try and get another capture of it. I also feel a back button focus can be an advantage here because that allows you to just quickly manually focus if there's branches in the way and you want to reach a bird that's behind some branches and if your automatic focus can pick it up normally you'd have to switch to manual focus um, but if you have back button focus you can just immediately go twist the dial and then take the shot anyways i'm gonna go for a wander and see what else we can find. Hi, 
had a couple of goldfinch, but they just flew off. And as you can see here now, the light is just so harsh. As I said, this has all been about not just wandering aimlessly and just chasing every bird there is and just trying to get a shot of everything. It's more about like when you come to a new place, looking for things that is going to look good, looking for things that you want to include in an image that will just enhance it so much more. Something that will really make an image. Uh, and that's what I've been doing here today. I found four habitats, four kind of little micro habitats or areas that I want to focus on. So I would just go from spot to spot and find the most kind of wherever the places that have bird activity or at least a chance for bird activity. And then I would focus on those areas to try and get photos there as opposed to just wandering around aimlessly. I did do a couple of opportunistic kind of photograph opportunities though. When I was walking over the heath out there, um, there was uh, there's a meadow pipit just on the heather, so got down low, got a couple of shots of that as it was just on top of the heather. Quite happy with that. And of course, you're not just going to walk by something when you see something that, that's a good opportunity. But the idea is just to focus more time on areas that are going to get you some really nice photos and not just a bunch of average ones. So that's the idea anyways. Mm -hmm.